Well, it's summer, and if there's one fish to target with lures, it's got to be the chub, lovely chub like this one. And I'm going to show you how I go about fishing for them with crankbaits. So uh, it's early morning and we have got a full day ahead of us uh, to be on the river, fishing with crankbaits, trying to catch the chub. Um, and yeah, I've got a couple of sections in mind. We're gonna start on this one. If, we're, if it's not happening here, we'll be jumping in the car and going upstream to another spot or two. Uh, but we have got the full day ahead of us. Um, I'm gonna start on the Hornet, one of my favorite crankbaits, one of my favorite lures, in fact. And uh, we'll work this section. Let's see if we can catch some chub. as I thought. Come on, come on in, come. So we are working our way through these at the moment. Uh, as you've probably seen, we're catching plenty of these. Uh, even a couple of small perch, all on little rattling hornets. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll just keep going and hopefully we will catch up with that bigger fish. Well, it is starting to warm up. It's about eight o'clock and uh, we are struggling to find a decent stamper fish. We're catching plenty of chub, but we're not getting the one that we're after. I think it's time to jump in the car, head upstream and uh, have another go up that way. So we're now at the next location, uh, just a short walk down to the river. Let's get down there. Hopefully we'll be able to find a chub or two. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Trying to do me in the near bank. Oh my God. Need to let a little bit more line out. Oh. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Ah, he's quite good on right in there. Yeah, he's in. He's in. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that's crazy in this current. Yeah. So I've had to wade through a lot of smaller fish and now we've got a nicer one on a rattling hornet. Look at him, absolutely stunning. One of my favorite fish to catch in summer on lures. A little crankbait under a bush and a nice chub. So far, I've mainly been fishing with the Hornet. I do love the Hornet. Uh, it's such a fantastic crankbait. And um, what I have found with this, fishing this uh, through the summer months, is not only do the chub love them, but so do the perch. And uh, yeah, in summer, it's really nice to run into one of those every now and then, isn't it? So yeah, the Hornet, absolutely love it. Hornet isn't the only lure that I've got in the box. I'm putting on a little bug now. 
and these are absolutely superb. I think they're great for mimicking something that's falling out the branches of a tree. I think Chubb come to the sound of that plop, you know. And these, if you can cast them underneath a bush, quite often they're hit within milliseconds of, of hitting the water's surface. You know, a Chubb will just, as soon as it hits the water, you barely moved it at all. Chubb comes up, absolutely smashes it, if you put it in the right spot. They come in two and three centimetres uh, and a range of different colours. Let's get it out into the water, flick it under some bushes and see if we can catch a chub. So not much happening on my little bug at the moment. Uh, what I might try is the tiny. Uh, that's a lure, that's a tiny little crank that will work that surface layer still. So you're talking about surface and just subsurface with a little tiny um, and sometimes if the fish haven't got the confidence to hit the bug, uh, they'll take a, a tiny. It's got a very aggressive action, the tiny, very aggressive. Uh, and they're perfect on, on small overgrown rivers like this one. Getting bigger, that big and that decent one can't be too far away. Have these swims because you can let these floating cranks move down into position, kind of like I was saying before. Leave it to go down to where we want it. even let it go down further than that. Down to where probably no one even fishes. Even with bait, they couldn't get a bait there. Unless they're free lining, rolling meat, they could potentially, but that is what I like about cranks and how it can be so effective for the chub. Just let the floating lure glide downstream. Oof, there we go. Oof. Yes. Absolutely slammed it. Brilliant. Was on the near bank and the game is absolutely engulfed the lure these fish really do want it Oof. boy he's in the flow come on oh, on the near bank that's awesome <laughs> So we've got a nice chunky one here. There we are, look at him. Lovely. Uh, I scaled down this crankbait, uh, fishing along here in shallower water. And this one took it just as we came up the inside line. So very pleased with that. Um, that, that was a really good example of, of the chub just hitting the lure on the inside bank, on the near bank. You know, you, I walked into this swim and the river looks completely empty. It looks like there's no fish in it at all. Uh, it just shows, you know, make sure that you check that near bank. In fact, you know, check the far bank and the near bank. Although the river looks empty, they are stuck right underneath the bank quite often and with that one I cast it over uh, to the far bank and I let it drift naturally across the river to the near bank and then just put, brought it very slowly up the near bank and it just got hit halfway along. So there you go, never write off a swim just because you can't see any fish in it. Quite often they are tucked away 
quite often they will be on that near bank. We're just up the inside line there. Incredible, really. It's a floating lure, so what I did, I let it go down river a fair amount until I was happy that I'm sort of fishing an area that a lot of people probably don't fish. And it smacked it as it come up the inside. It was so clear and so shallow. No signs of any fish, but it shows they are there. They're just tucked right in, which is why I like these floating cranks because you can maneuver them into position i mean i do like the like suspending and sinking but i do like the way look and just let the line come off the reel and let it go down to where i want it So there's a bush on the near bank. I don't know if you can see it, but I've let the lure go down to where that is because it floats. I just let the flow take it down to where I want it to be and then I can start to retrieve it. And that's what worked on the last, on the last fish. Quite often I'm asked if I use a trace when I'm using cranks. Um, and the truth of it is, you know, if I'm sight fishing and for the chub quite often, I have got the Polaroids on and I'm sight fishing, then no, I don't. I'll go straight in with a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. That's because I can see the fish that I'm fishing for and I'm literally cast into them. Um, if, if that's not the case, and I suspect there might be uh, pike in the stretch, then I will always, always use a trace. I found a nice shaded spot because it's ridiculously hot out there. Uh, quite nice to sit in the shade a bit and have a chat about lures and, uh, and cranks. Uh, we've spoken a little bit about the little bug and the tinies. Uh, what are, what's mainly been working today is uh, the hornets uh, and in natural colours. Uh, when the water's clear and it has been very clear, all the stretches I've fished today have been fairly clear. And so it's no surprise that I've gone in with the natural colours and pearl shad in particular has worked really well today. I have had a few uh, on the holographic shad as well, the hornet in the holographic shad, but it is the pearl shad that has worked really well today. Uh, a three and a half centimetre floating, uh, that has worked really well on the session so far. Of course, I don't always stick to natural colours. Uh, these bright cranks are really good when the water gets coloured. Um, you know, after some rain, obviously, it's all going to colour colour up. And when I do, yeah, bright lures will come out. My favourites in those, certainly the hot perch is a fantastic colour and the chartreuse, probably my two favourite bright, brightly coloured hornets. Again, don't tend to go over four centimetres when I'm using them for the, for the chub. A couple of other lures worth mentioning. Uh, the chub have got a very varied diet, they will hit a bullhead. And it's probably worth having a chat about the, the difference between floating, suspending and sinking uh, lures. Because uh, I really like using these minnows and when I use these minnows, I generally like to use them sinking. So how do you choose when to use a floating, suspending or sinking uh, crankbait? Uh, certainly with floating for me, if the fish are near the surface and they look like they're going to hit lures on the surface off the top or just subsurface, then obviously I'm going to go with a floating lure. The other reason that I really favour floating lures is the fact that I can let the flow manoeuvre that lure into position for me. So a number of times today I've cast, uh, cast out into the river and then I've let the flow take the crankbait underneath the bush to somewhere where you just couldn't cast. It's impossible to cast. And that's what I do really like about the floating crankbaits. 
The sinking crankbaits I like to use, like this minnow, when I'm wanting to explore the far bank. I think they're the best option if you're wanting to explore an overhanging tree that's on the far bank. Obviously, if you've got a floating lure that's going to take quite a few cranks of the handles to get right down, then obviously you're moving it away from that feature. Uh, rather than exploring underneath it. When you're wanting to do that, a lure that sinks is obviously a really good option. Uh, you could put on a soft bait, but I just like how aggressive some of these, these lures are in the water. So a sinking lure like this minnow is absolutely perfect if you're wanting to explore the depths underneath uh, a far bank overhanging tree or bush. In terms of lures that suspend, like suspending lures, I like to fish those like twitch baits, like jerk baits. So that is, they're not confident enough to take off the top. I wanna to cast out a suspending bait that I can suspend just below the surface and I can twitch it a couple of times and then just let it hang. And then quite often it's on those, on that pause that the chub or the perch will absolutely slam the lure. Uh, and that's really, really effective. Uh, little twitch baits, little jerk baits that are suspending. Uh, make sure you haven't got any swivels or anything like that on your line. Just go straight in with a fluorocarbon on a suspending um, lure. And yeah, you can really sort of like explore those mid layers uh, without actually having to move the, the lure really, really quickly. Dark canopy here. There we go. Oh, screwed that up. Clutch was too loose. Yeah. Schoolboy error. There we go. So what we've got here, another little perch. Ah. Won't mess about with cameras for him. What we got? Oh, it's a perch again. Quite a lot of perch along here. So it really is warming up out here now. Thought I'd quickly show you sort of what I bring with me. Uh, in terms of the luggage, this chest pack is absolutely perfect. It means that all the lures are accessible. They're right on my chest. They're just where I need them. If I want to switch out the cranks, which I do quite a lot as I'm fishing, it's great that everything's accessible on the front here. And then for a few larger items in the back, I can put those on what feels like a sort of traditional rucksack on the back. So yeah, that's the chest pack. I've also got the net with me, just a net. In terms of the rod that I like to use, I like to use the Prism Medium Light Spin in 14 gram. 14 gram is really my all rounder, it's my workhorse. It's what I'm using for nearly, uh, you know, the majority of my general lure fishing for chub and for perch. And I think the Medium Light Spin is just under seven foot, 14 gram. I think that really gives me enough backbone to work the lures. I don't want a finesse rod that's too fine so that I don't feel like I can work the lures. And also, that additional little bit of power in the rod is gonna help me manage these chub. Now, um, if you've ever caught chub on the river, whether it's on lure or any other way, you know they're dirty fighters. They will go for the near banks. If there's a snag around, they will find it. So I want something with a bit of backbone so that I can control the fish. Get a decent pair of Polaroids as well, because without them, you're completely blind. A lot of the time here, I'm sight fishing. So yeah, get some decent glasses. be into loads of perch <laughs> but yeah don't mind catching a few of these there we are we're gonna catch a few of those along the way and happy to do so <laughs> oh a little perch 
getting plenty of these. <laughs> like a little perch magnet. This one, little sinking minnow. Catching loads of these. So we have had a fish from this swim and there are still the odd, there is still the odd chub knocking about. Um, but they're being quite tricky. I'm switching up the lures because I just want one more. We always just want one more, don't we? So yeah, we'll keep, we'll keep going and um, hopefully, hopefully we can get another. Oh God. Oh, quite a sizable pike has just hit it. This is why we want a trace. <laughs> oh my word. Well, it might be time to call it a day. Some of the other predators have come out to play. This is why we've got to use a trace. Uh, one of the fine traces that I spoke about earlier. And bring the right tools to deal with the odd one of these. Quite happy, still good sport. <laughs> Well, that no doubt has caused a load of commotion in the swim uh, and we are losing the light rapidly, but we've got to have another go. Oh, yeah. Fish on. Feels like a good one. Oh, just, just steady pressure in the flow. There we go. That took ages to get that one. Come on, get in the net. Yes. There we are. <laughs> I really do need to go home. Um, yeah, I put that pike back, had to have another go, and got this one on a little four centimetre, horn it again. Absolutely super. What a fantastic day sport on the crankbaits. Mm -hmm.